Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. During the last uh, decade, the technology and especially in medicine too, has developed and progressed a lot. And one of them is intracardiac uh, echocardiography or ICE. This uh, technology in almost in all those intracardiac procedure, including uh, atrial uh, septal defect or PFO defect closing, uh, catheter ablation, uh, all uh, most of those uh, valve uh, repair and replacement and watchman procedure is better choice compared to the TEE or transthoracic echocardiography. And nowadays many center uh, cardiologist interventionalist they are very familiar and they use it a lot. There are many different type of the machine and probe for the eyes that uh, general concept in all of them are the same, but the only the fancy, the knob and those control panel handle a little different, but the concept among them are the same. Generally, we have two type of the uh, transducer for eyes. One of them is a radial or rotational uh, probe that in that case by the uh, uh, installing a rotator uh, motor, the tra transducer that is uh, one single large uh, piezoelectric rotate and create image. The problem with this type of the uh, probe is that first of all we have not too much uh, depth uh, for the imaging six to eight centimeter. Second, we don't have option for the Doppler study, color Doppler and all those other type of study. The another one is a phased array uh, ice uh, probe uh, that uh, is the same technology for other uh, ultrasound especially echo we use phase array in this uh, technology we use uh, phase array nowadays most center they use phase array uh, technology because uh, has better penetration and we have this opportunity to do Doppler uh, Doppler study Two, the differences between these two images, uh, these two probes is that in the rotational or uh, radial eyes probe, the image creates as a circular because the sector uh, rotates around the tip of the probe. But in the phase array, we have a pie shape image, almost 90 degree. Uh, sector that it comes from the footprint. Since the catheter, uh, the probe catheter size is uh, almost uh, 10 French, uh, so it can be uh, done easy like any other uh, catheter is cardiac catheterization and should be in, in the complete steril uh, situation. Some center prefer even our machine covered by a clear plastic too for uh, as a hygiene and cleaning later and other uh, cautious that we use in the uh, cat lab. This procedure usually uh, be done in cat lab, especially in hybrid or EP uh, lab. The, one of the most important for uh, performing this uh, procedure or uh, technique uh, imaging study is that we have we should have first a baseline anatomy of the heart through the transthoracic echo or TE. So based on that, we know what uh, challenge maybe we will face during 
the study but the te uh, technique because the size of the catheter and maneuver is easy we can uh, do it uh, without any problem if we know the situation ahead uh, sometimes we need some assistance because usually this type of study uh, will be done during the other procedure including ablation or valve replacement and so on. Like the other two modalities, uh, TTE and TE, we have some maneuvers with the ice uh, probe that is very important to understand those maneuver for getting images and uh, understanding those anatomic structure in our images. First, let's go see the anatomy of the probe. Here we have probe. The footprint is toward our face. Here is the transducer footprint. And here is tip of the catheter probe. The marker side will be proximal to that proximal of the footprint means toward the handle and the other one that is close to the tip will be other side that on the sector if you look at this one you are watching from the side to the probe here is sector footprint is here so the marker side will be this part and the other one the top one knowing that is very important second and the orientation of the image in monitor is different from those other two modalities. On TTE and TEE, we, uh, the image, the marker side would be on the right side or left of the monitor, our right side. But on ice will be on our left side here. So know that one is important. And so this side of the sector image belong to this side and vice versa this side is this side that is the first we have to know now let's go to the uh, maneuver we have uh, three movement maneuver and four uh, steering maneuver let's go first those moving maneuver one of them is like that uh, TE, we do, we pushing uh, forward or advancing. For example, here, uh, tip of the probe is at the le uh, right atrium. We want to go advance, we bending and then we go forward. So this is advancing. Another is pulling back or retracting or withdrawing. And the next one is rotating. So rotating withdrawing or uh, retracting and progressing or pushing in those three uh, movement maneuver that they are very critical we go for each of the view which maneuver we use then we have steering that at the handle of the our probe depending of the machine is knob or some pushing or twisting or pushing up and down or twisting left and right depending on what type of the uh, transducer and what men, uh, vendor you use it but generally in all of them we have this three four uh, steering uh, movement here you are facing to the footprint if you uh, tilt or bending the tip of the probe to the right, we called it uh, right tilting or right flexing. And if we tilt to the left, we called it left tilting. That is the first uh, maneuver, side by side, bending the probe side by side. The other two, are bending toward the footprint or opposite of the footprint here if we bending the probe toward the uh, footprint we called it anterior uh, tilting or anti-flex and if we bending the other way we, we called it posterior tilting or retroflex so with this uh, four maneuver that is very important because as you know 
in the transthoracic echo and T, we have some option that we twisting the probe on TTE and on the TE with rotating sector from 0 to 180 degree, we can go from a long axis to the short axis or, or oblique. But on the ice, we don't have this option. Uh, how, so how we can go from the short, long axis to the short axis in the ice is very easy and simple. Just with this for steering, for the, with this steering, for example, uh, tilting to the left and retrograde, uh, retroflex or posterior, bending posterior, we go a little from the long then to the short axis. Little by little, you will understand this one, how it works. Now, let's see how the image looks like, the anatomic orientation of our structure in the image. Here, imagine this is the when we put the first image come the right ventricular inflow. When you uh, probe entrance to the RA, that is if we didn't touch any those uh, knobs for left and right and or uh, posterior anterior tilting a little when we because we notch position we advance the probe to the RA. When it start RA show up, we fan in a little uh, or anti flex, we bending anterior, and suddenly we will see this view. The, on the real image is this one, real anatomic structure. But on the monitor, the image has been rotated, usually clockwise. We are going to talk clockwise, but how much, depending on the, how much we have tilting left, right, or anterior and posterior, the amount of rotation of the image compared to the reality will be different. Just you have to uh, know exactly uh, how the probe angling anterior, posterior, or left or right that on the fluoroscope we can see and based on the other image parameter and landmark, we can figure it out exactly what is the real anatomy orientation that we are watching on the monitor. Another one is how we keep in our mind, how we can imagine the image in the, uh, and correspond it with the reality. As you remember, on TTE, in the long axis, for example, parasternal, it was, looks like we're cutting the heart in the long axis and watching from left side to the cross-section surface of the right side of the heart, right side of the part. On the ice, it looks like we're cutting heart in long axis. It looks we're cutting heart at that sector and that level, and we're watching from the right side of the patient to the left part, exactly like this. You are watching from the right side of the patient to the left part of the cross-section surface. On the short axis, it looks like we're cutting that cross-section wherever we are, what, what level we are, for example, here at the aortic valve, it looks like we, when we are on, watching on monitor, we are watching from the below and watching the cross-section upper part. That is the most fundamental important uh, tip that you have to remember for imagining what structure uh, you are watching what is, and how the orientation of those images correspond with reality. With knowing this, uh, this uh, tips and tricks that I mentioned, the rest of this, uh, rest of them are nothing because based on the finding those landmark and knowing the orientation of your probe and location of your probe right away, you can figure it out exactly each structure or is what. Now let's go for the views. Here is the, those maneuver 
that affect the orientation and direction of our sector. Imagine uh, this is our sector and pencil here is footprint. Now, if when we twist it or rotating clockwise or contact clockwise, but later we talk, it's we change the scanning uh, axis and so we can exactly survey all the hard and different. With combination of tilting to the left and right, as you can see here, and retroflex or antroflex, we can make it our uh, sector orientation transverse or short axis compared to the long axis. Just that is the, those maneuver we use it and instead of the uh, changing the angle of the sector on the TE or rotating probe on TT, we use combination of tilting left and right and anterior and posterior, we can change long axis to the short axis or vice versa. For ice protocol and view, it's better we use nomenclature uh, pattern. Here you can see uh, those view at different level and maneuver we can get it. When our probe enter to the RA at the neutral position without uh, any tilting steering our probe, the first view we will see, we call it home page. The home page usually looks like that. It's dependent again how much our probe is in or uh, it is a little to, uh, rotating when we put it there entrance to the RA. A little may be different, but general structure that we can see is something uh, including right atrium, that is our probe exactly. In this case is here, superior, anterior of the uh, RA, imagine is exactly almost at this level. Then we have tricuspid, right ventricle, and a little of the RVOT and part of the aorta. This is that when we entrance and uh, the tip of the probe come to the right atrium. We call it home page. If we want to see the two chamber of the right side and that view home page, we just we have to a little, imagine here, we have to a little twist counterclockwise and a little uh, antiflex. In that case, the only structure we will see will be right atrium and right ventricle, two chamber of the right heart. If we want to see from there, we want to see other structure, we just we have to rotate it, it's gently rotate it clockwise. The first show this view homepage again, and if continue rotating, start showing aorta and pulmonary that later I will show it. Then if we keep continue rotation around two to three o'clock, it uh, show up three chamber of the heart is uh, almost the same structure that we see on the plaques. Then and so on. With those, just, those are just with rotation. But if in any of those uh, view, we want to see some other structure, we have to use those uh, all maneuver together, including putting, pulling or pushing, advancing probe or pulling back, antiflex, retroflex, tilting left, tilting right, all those maneuver and following the landmarks and keeping our image in our mind based on the correlate with the real anatomy and structure. From there, we can get any view, any structure and uh, discover any pathology that we are looking for. Unfortunately, still we don't have any standard uh, protocol for the eyes, but here is a, a suggestion by Dr. Arkali and colleagues is a good idea I have just in mind uh, when we want to approach uh, for uh, ICE study. Uh, they uh, offer we can study in five level depending on the position of our uh, tip of the probe, uh, mid, 
right atrial that's exactly at entrance when we put and we uh, come out to the come into the right atrium then low uh, right atrial uh, position right ventricle inflow right ventricle outflow and left atrium I am not going to explain the image is completely clear and uh, description here you can pause it and study by yourself just a, a few seconds I uh, pause and then we go next one here at the low RA position probe how we do maneuver at all those structure you can again pause it and study here is the RV inflow position the sector orientation and those structure that we can see very easy again pause it later uh, review by yourself here is rv outflow position those view that and structure we can see and the last one la uh, position that is very good for evaluation of the LA. But uh, we have to remember that beside of those uh, approaching, that those are general idea. Depending on what procedure we are going to do, we have to be flexible and just focus on those important structure and related finding. Here is a full study that has been done and prepared by Dr. Enriquez and his colleagues and he explained very well and clear and I'm not going to talk over it. Let's watch together. Intracardiac echo imaging from the right atrium. Intracardiac echo imaging from the right atrium. Once the catheter is advanced into the right atrium, the home view shows the right atrium above the right ventricle below, separated by the tricuspid valve, the pulmonary artery, and the RV outflow tract. Color is used to assess for tricuspid regurgitation. From the home view, clockwise rotation brings into view the aortic root at 2 o'clock, the right atrium, the coronary sinus, and the left ventricle. The aorta, separated by the aortic valve, and the pulmonary artery, and the septal portion of the right ventricular outflow tract. Color is used for assessment of valve function in this view. Further clockwise rotation shows the right atrium separated by the intraatrial septum from the left atrium. The mitral valve separates the left atrium from the left ventricle, and at 4 o'clock position we see the left atrial appendage. Color Doppler is used to assess for valve function. Further clockwise rotation slightly shows the left atrium and the pulmonary veins, and behind the left atrium we see the descending aorta. In this view, we assess for color Doppler and we can sample the left superior and the left inferior pulmonary vein. Further clockwise rotation now shows the left atrium and the descending aorta. In between these two structures, we can identify the esophagus. More clockwise rotation brings into view the right pulmonary veins, the right inferior pulmonary vein and the right superior pulmonary vein separated by the carina. Color Doppler can be used to assess for pulmonary vein flow. In this case, the right inferior pulmonary vein and the right superior pulmonary vein are sampled separately. More clockwise rotation brings the right atrium into view. The right superior pulmonary vein was left behind, and now we see the superior vena cava and the right atrium, separated by the crystal terminalis and the arcuate ridge. 
as we clockwise more the catheter, the right atrial appendage comes into view and the tricuspid valve separating the right atrium from the right ventricle to finally come back to the home view. To visualize the moderator band, the catheter has been advanced into the right ventricular outflow track across the tricuspid valve. From this position, slight anteroflexion and gentle clock and counterclockwise rotation is needed to identify all the extension of the moderator band. Its ventricular septal insertions and right free wall extensions, as well as the connections with the right ventricular papillary muscles are seen. In the left part of the video, an ablation catheter has been advanced into the right ventricle via a deflectable sheet. The catheter is placed parallel to the right ventricular free wall, and the ablation tip is placed in the ventricular aspect of the moderator band to help with catheter stability at the time of RF delivery. From this view, further clockwise rotation will show the inferior apical aspect of the left ventricle and then the papillary muscle comes into view. In this case, an ablation catheter has been placed retrograde into the LV and the tip placed at the inferior portion of the posterior medial papillary muscle. To visualize the moderator band, the catheter has been advanced into the right ventricular outflow track across the tricuspid valve. From this position, slight anteroflexion and gentle clock and counterclockwise rotation is needed to identify all the extension of the moderator band. Its ventricular septal insertions and right free wall extensions, as well as the connections with the right ventricular papillary muscles are seen. In the left part of the video, an ablation catheter has been advanced into the right ventricle via a deflectable sheet. The catheter is placed parallel to the right ventricular free wall, and the ablation tip 
is placed in the ventricular aspect of the moderator band to help with catheter stability at the time of RF delivery. From this view, further clockwise rotation will show the inferior apical aspect of the left ventricle, and then the papillary muscle comes into view. In this case, an ablation catheter has been placed retrograde into the LV, and the tip placed at the inferior portion of the posterior medial papillary muscle. From this view, additional clockwise rotation will image the anterior lateral papillary muscle. This can be easily recognized because it is next to the left ventricular outflow tract and also because it's right in front of the mitral valve apparatus. Use of intracardiac echo to evaluate the cabotricuspis isthmus of the right atrium. Eyes anatomical evaluation of the cabotricuspid isthmus is performed once the catheter is advanced into the right atrium and from the home view. Gentle anterior flexion, counter and clockwise rotations of the ice catheter allows visualization of the septal and lateral aspects of the cabotricuspid isthmus. Information about the anatomical characteristics and its variants that could represent obstacles for ablation are evaluated. In particular, its length, the prominence of the eustachian ridge, presence of hypertrophic pectinate muscles and pouches. These findings help the operator define the best strategy and choose tools to overcome the anatomical challenges. Image A from the right atrium shows the cabotricuspid isthmus. The right atrium is separated from the right ventricle by the tricuspid valve. The CTI is located between the tricuspid valve and the IVC. We can see a prominent eustachian ridge pointed by the yellow arrow. The image B shows the movement of the eustachian ridge and the CTI during flutter and recognizes the anatomical challenges before starting the ablation. Image C corresponds to the same patient once the ablation of the distal aspects of the CTI has started close to the tricuspid valve end of the isthmus. Stability is achieved with the aid of the flexible sheath. An ice catheter is used for continuous assessment of the catheter location and contact. In this image, it can be visualized that the eustachian ridge is pushed down by the deflectable sheath and the catheter. And from this position, the catheter is withdrawn to the IVC aspect of the isthmus. However, in image D, once we're close to the eustachian ridge, we can demonstrate the difficulty in achieving adequate catheter contact at the substachian portion of the isthmus limiting RF delivery. Image E shows a more lateral approach which also is limited by the eustachian ridge movement and its prominence. Image F demonstrates the ice guided strategy to overcome a prominent eustachian ridge. The unit composed by the deflectable sheath and the ablation catheter is bent over the eustachian ridge and RF is delivered from the ventricular aspect of the ridge. Image H and I show the corresponding RAO and LAO fluoroscopic views of image F. Use of intracardiac echo to evaluate the cabotricuspis isthmus of the right atrium. Ice anatomical evaluation of the cabotricuspid isthmus is performed 
once the catheter is advanced into the right atrium and from the home view. Gentle anterior flexion, counter and clockwise rotations of the ice catheter allows visualization of the septal and lateral aspects of the cavotricospid isthmus. Information about the anatomical characteristics and its variants that could represent obstacles for ablation are evaluated. In particular, its length, the prominence of the eustachian ridge, presence of hypertrophic pectinate muscles and pouches. These findings help the operator define the best strategy and choose tools to overcome the anatomical challenges. Image A from the right atrium shows the cavotricuspid isthmus. The right atrium is separated from the right ventricle by the tricuspid valve. The CTI is located between the tricuspid valve and the IVC. We can see a prominent eustachian ridge pointed by the yellow arrow. The image B shows the movement of the eustachian ridge and the CTI during flutter and recognizes the anatomical challenges before starting the ablation. Image C corresponds to the same patient once the ablation of the distal aspects of the CTI has started close to the tricuspid valve end of the isthmus. Stability is achieved with the aid of the flexible sheath. An ice catheter is used for continuous assessment of the catheter location and contact. In this image, it can be visualized that the eustachian ridge is pushed down by the deflectable sheath and the catheter. And from this position, the catheter is withdrawn to the IVC aspect of the isthmus. However, in image D, once we're close to the eustachian ridge, we can demonstrate the difficulty in achieving adequate catheter contact at the substachian portion of the isthmus limiting RF delivery. Image E shows a more lateral approach which also is limited by the eustachian ridge movement and its prominence. Image F demonstrates the ice guided strategy to overcome a prominent eustachian ridge. The unit composed by the deflectable sheath and the ablation catheter is bent over the eustachian ridge and RF is delivered from the ventricular aspect of the ridge. Image H and I show the corresponding RAO and LAO fluoroscopic views of image F. Intracardiac echo imaging to recognize thrombus and prevent systemic embolism. Figure A1 corresponds to a patient referred two weeks after a failed ablation of left atrial flutter complicated by a postoperative transient neurologic deficit. The TE shows a small ASD with left to right flow at the side of the prior transeptal puncture, but no thrombus is visualized and the patient is clear for ablation procedure. Image A2 demonstrates the intracardiac echo evaluation of the intraatrial septum from the right atrium. The area of the atrial septal defect at the site of prior transeptal puncture is evaluated and visualized with intracardiac echo. A small mobile clot pointed with a red arrow at the site of the prior transeptal puncture is detected by intracardiac echo and was not seen by TE. The procedure was canceled and anticoagulation continued for six weeks before attempting a second procedure. Image B1 demonstrates our imaging protocol before advancing sheets into the left atrium at the time of transeptal puncture. This patient was on therapeutic warfarin with an INR of 2.5 and therapeutic IV heparin has been administered with an ACT of 350 seconds at the time of the transeptal puncture. One transeptal puncture has already been performed and a second transeptal puncture is about to be performed. Despite the therapeutic anticoagulation, careful imaging of the sheath 
before advancing into the atrium. It's always obtained. In this case, a small mobile clot is seen and marked by a red arrow at the tip of the second transeptal sheath. The sheath is retracted, aspirated, and the clot is recovered and shown in image B2. Image C demonstrates our imaging protocol for the ascending aorta in patients with left ventricular access is to be obtained via a retrograde approach. From the RVOT clockwise motion after imaging the aortic valve open the ascending aorta. In this case, a complex aortic plaque with a mobile component, presumably a thrombus, is seen during the initial screening and is pointed by the red arrow. The retrograde approach is abandoned and a transeptal approach was chosen instead. Image D shows the intracardiac echo examination of the LV apex of a patient with an old anteroseptal myocardial infarction referred for VT ablation. The image demonstrates an LV clot in the apical aneurysm, preventing LV mapping of this area. The clot is pointing with the red arrow. intracardiac echo imaging to recognize thrombus and prevent systemic embolism. Figure A1 corresponds to a patient referred two weeks after a failed ablation of left atrial flutter complicated by a postoperative transient neurologic deficit. The TE shows a small ASD with left to right flow at the side of the prior transeptal puncture but no thrombus is visualized and the patient is clear for ablation procedure. Image A2 demonstrates the intracardiac echo evaluation of the intraatrial septum from the right atrium. The area of the atrial septal defect at the site of prior transeptal puncture is evaluated and visualized with intracardiac echo. A small mobile clot pointed with a red arrow at the side of the prior transeptal puncture is detected by intracardiac echo and was not seen by TE. The procedure was canceled and anticoagulation continued for six weeks before attempting a second procedure. Image B1 demonstrates our imaging protocol before advancing sheets into the left atrium at the time of transeptal puncture. This patient was on therapeutic warfarin with an INR of 2.5 and therapeutic IV heparin has been administered with an ACT of 350 seconds at the time of the transeptal puncture. One transeptal puncture has already been performed and a second transeptal puncture is about to be performed. Despite the therapeutic anticoagulation, careful imaging of the sheath before advancing into the atrium is always obtained. In this case, a small mobile clot is seen and marked by a red arrow at the tip of the second transeptal sheath. The sheath is retracted, aspirated, and the clot is recovered and shown in image B2. Image C demonstrates our imaging protocol for the ascending aorta in patients with left ventricular access is to be obtained via a retrograde approach. From the RVOT clockwise motion after imaging the aortic valve open the ascending aorta. In this case, a complex aortic plaque with a mobile component, presumably a thrombus, is seen during the initial screening and is pointed by the red arrow. The retrograde approach is abandoned and a transeptal approach was chosen instead. Image D shows the intracardiac echo examination of the LV apex of a patient with an old anteroseptal myocardial infarction referred for VT ablation. The image demonstrates an LV clot in the apical aneurysm, preventing 
LV mapping of this area. The clot is pointing with the red arrow. It was a uh, glance at ICE study. I am hoping to uh, have uh, some uh, cooperation with uh, cardiologists and especially interventionist cardiologists. And we have some uh, extra lecture about this uh, topic. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.